Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo Flynn's Path. So, y'all, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Listen, I'm not really in the mood for this right now. That's a long pause. You're acting a little crazy right now, too. Listen, I'll be on my way if I can just come in for a bit. I'm even burning up. I see Flynn push his forehead against the glass, eyes closed, frustration written all over his face. All right, a glass of water to get out so I can go back to sleep. Fine. With that, Flynn closes the window, watching it for a while before sighing loudly again. All right, stay here, got it? If he knows you're here, we're, we both know he'll kill us both. Yeah. All right, if for whatever reason he comes back here, hide under the fucking bed if you have to. With that, Flynn turns and heads out the door into the hallway. That last thing he said has me feeling like shit. Sneaking around behind Leo's back like this is wrong, even if I know telling him about it would be worse. Is it my fault that Leo can't get over our relationship? I have the right to do what I want, right? I sigh and press my forehead into the bed. Staring at my crotch, that's when I realize that I'm still naked. I look up, listening. I hear the front door open, followed by some distant mumbling from Leo. If I sneak to the bathroom real quick, I can grab my clothes. Maybe stay there until Leo arrives. Leo leaves. At least that way, it won't look as bad if he finds me for whatever reason. I get up and pad quietly to the hall, listening. I can hear some clinking around the kitchen, and the murmur of some voices. The kitchen is practically out of sight from the hall, which leads to the living room. I stand there for a moment longer, tail twitching as I contemplate if this is a good idea or not. The moment I hear Leo's voice coming from the kitchen area again, I quickly tiptoe the short distance to the bathroom. Despite not having come close at all to being caught, my heart still hammers in my chest. That is a really fucking nice bathroom. The voice, con the voice continues to mumble in the kitchen as I start looking around for my clothes. They're folded neatly on the counter, and I quickly snatch them up. Pretty sure I wouldn't smell on you. I catch a few words from Leah that makes my ears perk. Something about smell? Leo smells a lot of things. He has a canine's nose. My eyes widen. Did he smell me on Flynn? I'm pretty sure Flynn hasn't showered since what we did yesterday. My heart rate picks up again as I feel my knees wanting to give out. Where the fuck are you going? This time I do hear Flynn, and I know exactly what it means. The only problem is that I'm still naked in the fucking bathroom. Should I lock the door? Then Leo would definitely know that no someone's here and that it probably is probably me. Fuck! I mouth the word, knowing that Leo would, he would hear it if, he if I said it now. I hear heavy footsteps coming up the hall. I definitely can't go back to the room and hide under the bed now. They don't keep coming toward the bathroom, though. The movements become somewhat muffled again as I turn into Flynn's room. This is fucking crazy, Leo! If Leo heard Flynn, he doesn't say anything. I anticipate the sound of Leo ripping up Flynn's room, but I guess he isn't that far gone because things go quiet again. There's some pacing around, along with heavy, heavy breathing. You realize I could call the cops, right? I hear the closet door open. I look around desperately, realizing that I don't have much time. First thing I see in the sh is the shower curtain in the bathtub. It's a see-through blue color, and there's, so there's no way I can stand behind it and not be seen. I hear shifting around the other room again, and their bickering becomes more clear as they step back into the hall. Panicking and practically numb with fear, I crouch down and pull out a, a cupboard under the and pull open a cupboard under the sink. Amazingly, there are only a few bottles of cleaning solutions, leaving plenty of room for me to squeeze in. As quietly as I can, I crawl into the opening. Reaching back out, I pull the door closed, setting my other hand against it as I do so that it won't spring shut. <sighs> Everything goes dark and their voices become muffled again. <clears throat> I back up against the very back of the enclosure, hugging my knees as I try to keep my breathing quiet. It's actually a little while before they come into the bathroom and I almost jump as Leo's voice booms in the small space. His smell is all over your fucking house! Then you should, should probably shower more. There's a small silence and I imagine that Leo just gave him a look that shattered any surly confidence he might have had. Like I said, he was here for like an hour yesterday. And why didn't you fucking tell me that earlier? Because I knew you'd be acting like this, seriously. The footsteps shift again in time with their voices muffling. I dare to let out a small sigh of relief. I can still hear them arguing, but I don't really care enough. Oh. Um. Okay. Alright, let me, uh. Drink some water real quick. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Follow them. You pass through the cupboard door and enter the bathroom. You follow the voices down the hall into the kitchen. Leo is on his way to the door. He stops in front of it, turning back around to Flynn, who's, close, who's following closely behind. You're really starting to piss me off, Flynn. And you're really starting to freak me out, Leo. All that still doesn't explain why his smell is all over you. Flynn works his jaw for a moment, eyes narrowed. We roughhouse a little bit by the mine. By the mine. You know how we get sometimes. It was really hot. 
Leo's shaking his head like he's tired of listening to what Flynn has to say. Like he's tired of everything. And then to have it mixed with that smell... Flynn throws his hands up, exasperated. I jerked off later. Sorry, but this really ain't any of your business. You know, it kind of fucking is since I planned out this entire fucking thing. Leo's starting to lose his temper again. You know, this isn't like Leo at all. Calm down. Jesus, maybe maybe he went off to do more research or whatever. He said he wasn't done with all the at the mine. At the mine. Leo's not listening anymore. He's looking to the side, staring at the wall, hackles raised. Listen, I'll drive around town real quick to see if I can find him before work, all right? Flynn, you know you ruined this whole thing for me, right? Thing for you? What are you talking about? I'll be fucking damned if I let you do it again. The anger and spite in Leo's face is scaring Flynn. Leo, what's going on? But Leo isn't li still isn't listening. The wolf turns sharply, yanking open the door. Leo! Flynn reaches out, resting a hand on Leo's shoulder. But at that moment, the wolf throws an elbow back into Flynn so hard that the lizard is sent tumbling back several steps before falling to his knees. Flynn said a hoarse groan, but Leo ignores it, slamming the door shut on his way out. Flynn stays like that, doubled over on the carpet, making soft rasping noises before his breathing finally comes under his control. He stays there a while longer, absorbing what just happened, knowing that Leo isn't himself either. He also regrets doing anything with Chase. Finally, he looks up, right at you. You decide to leave. There's really no point to try and reason with him. It's been a while since you've been out alone like this. Feels good not being attached. Something about that lizard Flynn is helping this happen. You'll have to deal with him later. As you continue to walk down the dirt road, you see him. It takes a while at first because he's so far away. But then you see a thick tail waving back and forth as he approaches you. Can he see you? Probably. It's been a long time since you were attached. But the feelings, the thoughts, you can remember it like it was yesterday. The new one is better, a lot more quiet. At least you made him quiet. It was easier to do that with this one. He keeps walking towards you and you start to wonder if you should turn back. You always snap back eventually. Why not let this play out? See how far this will go. Now that you're this close, you can see water dripping off of his body. Even after all these years, finally you can make out his face. Angry, no, furious, finally seeing you again. He doesn't like what you did, and who can blame him? He starts to run towards you. You finally stop walking, waiting. He's on you in a second, lunging, blunt claws and sharp teeth bared. I keep wondering if I should come, if I should come out myself. The last time I heard any voices was like almost five minutes ago. Still, I realize that they could both be outside or something, and I don't want to come running out if Leo decides to come back. <sighs> so, was that uh, Chase's doppelganger? I'm betting that was Chase's doppelganger. So, so I wait, starting to feel sweaty in my cramped position. My nose twitching from the strong chemical smells. I'll probably have to take another shower. After another few minutes, I hear a soft padding up the hallway. I know it's Flynn, but I wait. Another few seconds of silence goes by before Flynn finally speaks. He's gone! So how are we going to explain to Leo that Carl just forgot that I was there? I pull my shirt over my head, feeling kind of gross and putting back on my musky shirt. Flynn stands in front of his dresser's, his dresser's mirror, having just finished putting on his, on his tie. He's currently picking at his scales with a pair of tweezers. Carl forgets everything, especially when he gets high, which is all the time. Flynn's been acting kind of distant after the whole Leo incident. It's not hard to imagine why. Feeling the same way. Leo almost finding out, probably finding out, had put a damper on our stupid excursions. It really put into perspective how immature we were being. Alright, so I'll say I spent the night at Carl's and left in the morning to do some filming, then came back. Flynn had told me to text all of this to Carl before I go over there. The only response I had gotten so far was a short, What? We don't got any other choices. <sighs> I guess not. And Chase, we probably shouldn't do this anymore. Yeah, I know. Flynn glances at me through the mirror, then returns to picking at his skin. He clears his throat. I know this is kind of gross, but it's fine. We've all got our gross things to deal with. Can't go into work looking like I got snowed on, heh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't ever really get that bad, but... Flynn breaks off awkwardly as he goes back to, it goes back to his grooming. It's weird seeing him off, see, seeing, him, seeing him this off, but again, it's not like it's unwarranted. I sit on the edge of the bed, texting Carl again to try to get him to at least partially understand what the plan is. After a couple of minutes, Flynn clears his throat again. Listen, Chase, you ever feel a bit, like, not yourself? Hmm? I look up and see that the lizard is looking at me through the mirror again. He quickly turns his attention back to his picking. I don't know, like, you're not fully in control of what you do? I frown. Is Flynn trying to get at something explain his own actions? Does he feel like he wasn't in control of what happened between us? 
No, at least I don't think so. Flynn finally puts down the tweezers and turns to me, leaning his rear against the dresser. So you never felt like you're not yourself? Though I'm not totally sure as to what Flynn is getting at, I decide to humor him and think. I guess, I guess after what happened when we were kids, it didn't feel right. After Sydney? Yeah. I tried to avoid talking about it directly, but Flynn doesn't seem to be bothered right now. You probably remember that I saw a therapist after because I felt so different and it scared me. Flynn nods. Did they figure it out? Kind of. If I remember right, they said it was like a, a disassociative thing. What's that? Like, sometimes when something really traumatic happens, your mind sort of distances you from yourself to protect you. I shrug. Something like that. I'm not very good at psych stuff. I almost tell Flynn to ask Jenna, but of course he can't. So, did they fix it? Not really, but I got used to it, I guess. It was like the new me. And you're okay with that? I shrug again. My therapist said that, said that really traumatic things can change the way your brain works forever. You just learn to live with it. That doesn't sound good. No, but it's part of my life. It's part of life. I think we all changed. Yeah. I don't go into detail about how it got worse over time. The whole not feeling like myself. How I felt more and more like my personality was bleeding away and that I'm a completely different person now that I was ten years ago. Because in the back of my mind, I just wonder if that's what it's like to grow up. That you become less like you were as a kid. Happy, carefree, complete douchebag. And turn into a hollow shell of that. I can still feel Flynn looking at me, so I decide to bring up something else that's just as... Just as uncomfortable since we're already there. So, uh, when are you planning to talk to TJ? Flynn's silent for only a second. Saturday. At the end of our at the end of your trip. I'm not sure if that's the best idea. It doesn't it doesn't leave much time to amend it doesn't leave much time to amend things if to amend make amends if things turn sour. Which they most likely will. Then again, I guess that means we'll we'll easily be able to just leave as soon as it's over. Okay. Flynn's still looking at me so abruptly, so abruptly, so I abruptly stand up, putting my phone back into my pocket. Anyway, uh, you ready to go? I don't want to make you late for work. Sure. Flynn finally straightens up, walking across the room to grab his keys. I'm glad just to have somewhere to go now. Flynn feeling, Flynn, Flynn feeling off like this is one of the most awkward experiences I've ever had. Probably because he's usually so good at making things not awkward. So with that, Flynn takes me to Carl. He's dropping me out before heading to work. I sit quietly next to Carl on the couch as he plays his video games. It's some kind of first-person shooter that I've never seen before. You know, I'm not all that into shooters, but this one is pretty good. Yeah? I try to act interested as I, as I browse through my phone. I've already texted Leo, apologizing and telling him that my phone had died. It's weird how quickly this lie has gotten out of control. I'm making things up as I go to this point, and I'm amazed at how easy it is. Leo hasn't responded, and I doubt he believes any of it. It still gives both of us room to pretend, though. Yeah, man, I think that this, it's the sci-fi elements. I could never play one of those World's World War shooters. Same. Carl clicks around with the controller for a while longer. You all right? I sigh loudly, finally tearing my eyes away from my phone. Yeah, I'm good. Because you don't seem good. I don't respond to that, instead choosing to zone out to whatever is happening on the screen. What's with this whole story, anyway? About you spending the night or whatever? Um, I debate whether it's worth telling Carl or not. You go along with it either way, but keeping all these secrets is starting to make me feel sick. Well, I spent the night at Flynn's. Leo found out I wasn't at the motel, so he came looking for me. Ah, oh, shit, did you and Flynn, uh... I let the silence hang for a while. Carl snorts. Wow! Come on, Carl. No, no, I don't mind. It just seems kind of weird. How so? I feel myself get defensive. I'm not really in the mood to be judged by Carl. Yeah, he's cool and everything, but his life, let alone his sex life, doesn't exactly put him in a position to do so. Well, he just barely got here like five days ago, and already... I sigh. You know how Flynn is. Yeah, I do. So you shouldn't be surprised. But I mean, we've known him since we were kids. It just feels a little bit... Carl, I'm not really in the mood right now. Carl goes quiet for a few more minutes. The clicking buttons on his controller are the only sound. Doesn't last long, though. You know, I saw you guys at the river a couple days back. I saw you too. I mean, I saw you guys. Carl, I just said I'm not in the mood. Carl shrugs. Just saying, I already know. It's cool. I keep quiet, hoping that we'll get Carl to drop this stupid subject already. It doesn't work. But I get why you gotta keep it from Leo like this. I pull my phone out to see if I've gotten a text from Leo yet. I haven't. Me and Leo, we don't hang out all that much, though I think he tries to. He talks about you a lot. I try to ignore the guilt that's steadily building up inside me. Did you smoke today? Because you're being real talkative right now. I only ask because I don't smell it. Usually it's pretty strong. I actually had an edible this morning. Carl giggles for a good long while after that. Oh, really? I massage my brow with a thumb and forefinger. 
Normally I get along great with Carl, especially when he's high, but after this morning, basically everything is getting on my nerves. I usually hate that shit, but I don't know, I guess I was bored today. This thing shoot me into fucking space. I guess it explains why you won't shut up. Hey, am I am I pissing you off? I immediately regret what I just said as Carl puts the game on pause. No, I just had a stressful morning. Ah, with Leo? Carl starts the game back up, giggling again as he shoots a space marine in the face. Mm-hmm. Finally, I take a text from Leo. Good to know. Another one immediately follows. Let's hang out sometime soon. But you know, Flynn cares about you too. Yeah? I text Leo a quick affirmative, though I'm not really sure what the hangout what the hangout well, when that hangout is going to happen. Yeah, when did stopped talking about you when we drove to the reservation? Really? It actually did seem really out of the ordinary. What the hell would Flynn have to say about me? Carl shrugs. Bunch of stuff. He wanted to buy you something from the reservation, but thought it might be too weird. Flynn? Buying me a gift? That is kind of weird. For, for Flynn, I mean. I thought it was kind of cute. What else did he say? Um... Carl seems to think hard while, while he continues to shoot guys on the screen. He twists the control his this way and that, bumping into my shoulder each time. Said you seem to have grown up a lot, that you're a way, that way different than you were as a teenager. Hmm. Yep, really cute. Carl's tone seems slightly annoyed there, but I don't really care enough to ask about it. Alright y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.